Okay, I will call the um, Committee on the Environment, Climate, and Legacy to order. Uh, let the record reflect that today is March 28th, in room, uh, March 28th, 2023, in room 1150. The time is 3.04. And today, uh, we only have one bill, but it's a big day, and so we want folks to re relax and be attentive at the same time. Um, I will situate myself over here, I, and if need to, for me to be over there, I'll pass the gavel to Sam McHugh to chair, but I, I think the uh, process is simple enough that I could just conduct business from this side because it's going to be um, uh, quite um, a bill um, to listen to, so I want to be at this side. It's a little bit more relaxing over here. <laughs> so. First, uh, I just want to make a motion to take the delete all, uh, to delete all to Senate 2438, now that we have quorum. So before you is Senate file 2438. Want to make a move that we, the committee adopt A1 amendment to Senate file 2438. It's the A3. A3, A3. okay. Adopt the A3 amendment to Senate File 2438. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, motion prevail. So thank you, Chair, uh, thank you, members. Uh, the bill before you, Senate File 2438, as amended, is our Senate Environment Budget Omnibus Bill. And so I will present the bill from here. Um, just a little introduction about the bill. Uh, this bill is fully funded, uh, our agency, which allows them to do the important and much needed work to keep our air, water, soil, and land clean and healthy for all Minnesotans. This is a bipartisan bill and includes a number of provision of chief author by GOP members as well. This is a fiscally responsible bill. There's no new fee increase. Article one contains the envir environment budget appropriation. Article two includes environmental policy changes that have physical impact to our states. And article three is a DNR land bill. While I'm proud of this bill and fully support every provision in here, I do wish we could have done more. There are a lot of important pieces of legislation that we were not able to include in this bill. I hope we can continue to have conversation about many of these ideas, especially policy proposal during the interim uh, and for the next session. Our work here is not done, um, and member, I urge your support for this bill. I would now like to turn things over to our Senate Council, Mr. Stanley, and our fiscal ana analyst, Mr. Mueller, to walk us through the delete all budget spreadsheet in further detail. And if anyone wants to make testimony, we'll welcomely accept that by uh, form of writing letters. Um, we want to make best use of our time. So uh, today we'll hear um, a walkthrough of this bill along with the budget. And then on Thursday, we'll uh, take amendment, uh, we'll take testimony, but mostly in writing. So, and from now till then, my, I will make myself available in case um, any of you members and also advocates out there want to um, change my mind on some provision, but I think this is a great, good bill. So here we go, um, Mr. Mueller. Um, Mr. Chairman and members, I'll be going through the spreadsheet. It's uh, handed out. Um, I'll quickly explain some of the, how the spreadsheet works. Now, this is a change item only spreadsheet. It doesn't show every um, rider that's in the bill. It just shows us the changes versus the, the base forecast. Um, 
All the yellow lines are, are change items. Um, it's organized by agency. The, the columns shows the agency totals going back to fiscal year 20 and 21, and then 22, 23. Then it shows the governor's budget, the next biennium, and the tails, and then the Senate uh, budget on this delete all amendment on the Senate columns. Um, all numbers are in thousands. Um, and I'll mention before I get to the end, as our target was 670, 670 million general fund over the base for fiscal year 24, 25, and then 90 million over the base in the tails. And when we get to the end of the spreadsheet, it'll show that. Um, so I'll start by going through the first agency uh, is pollution control agency. The first lines across the top are all the, the base totals by fund for the agency, and then the change items follow. Um, a lot of the change items were the change <laughs> items that were in the governor's budget. I'm not gonna mention every one of those, but I'll, I'll point out the ones where the Senate proposal is maybe different than what the governor had. Um, there are a number of, of lines that are called maintain current service levels, and this applies across all the agencies um, in the governor's budget, and we are carrying tails for all of them. I will note on most of the general fund appropriations in this proposal, other than the maintained current service levels, all the general fund appropriations are one time. Um, first items starting on line 15 are the general fund change items for pollution control agency. The first line item is the maintained current service levels at $1.5 million. That's um, the same as the governor and that does have tails. Uh, I'll skip down to line 19, the general fund request for water programs. Um, this is at $2 million, which is 720 below the governor. The next item I'll skip down to, there's uh, the governor had some, the governor's budget had some money for innovative solutions for managing pollutants, and a lot of this was uh, dealing with taconite industry. Um, there's some new language in the bill, uh, $900,000 for a grant to the NRI, and that is a carve out of the, out of the governor's, um, had $17.6 million for that research. And, and members, since we're going line by line here, if you have any questions, uh, do ask and we'll pay it and we'll, we'll give you, but, but try to minimize the questions so that, I'll try to minimize the time so that we can get this done and no filibuster. It is just and, a quick question, sure. Mr. Chair, thank you. I, I, uh, on the innovative uh, solutions, did you say 900 million? Mr. Mueller. Mr. Chairman, Senator Gray, I may have, but I meant 900,000. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, then I'm still wrong because on mine it says 600. Mr. Mr. Miller. Unless I need my like, glasses, which I might. This is a really small printing, yeah. but it looks like 600. Mr. Chairman, Senator Green, on line 23, oh, yeah, in, innovative. Senator you're correct. It's 600000 for that. The next line is the taconite industry grants, which is 16.7, and then there's a carve out of that of 900000 for the NRI research. And then when we get to our, I'll go through Article 1 riders later, and I'll point out all those that are reflect that in the spreadsheet. Uh, Mr. Chairman, next I'll go down to line 28 um, agency environmental IT upgrades. That's five million less than the governor. It's 30 million total. Um, next, I'll go down to line 35. Here's some items that came from the Senate. There's a PFAS firefighter gear report on line 35 for $500,000. This was out of Senate file 834, the PFAS bill. Line 36 is the dealing with fish kills and the protocols for that. It's $393,000 one time for that. Line 37 is the microplastics report from Senate file 2245, 500,000 for that. Um, waste prevention and reduction grants and loans. This bill is 
a little less than the governor at 13.9 million per year. And the governor's bill was doing some general fund money for score grants. This bill does not have that, but it does add 2 million per year of environmental fund money for score grants. And I'll point that out later in the spreadsheet. And that is it for changes versus the governor's budget. Uh, the amount of general fund spending for the Pollution Control Agency is $303 million. And most of that is back up on line um, 18, which is the Resilient Communities Water Infrastructure Grants, which was $173.8 million. And the tails number for general fund is just 1.7 million. And again, that is just for the operational increase. Next, we'll go down the changes to the environmental fund. A lot of these were also in the governor's budget. There are a few items where the Senate bill is less than the governor. Um, on line 52 and 53, the governor had, a little, had about $2 million in the budget for technical staffing for the PFAS blueprint. The Senate proposal here carries the cost of Senate file 834 basically out of that line item. So on line 53 are the costs associated with the Senate file 834, and that basically comes out of that line above that. Um, increased data management staffing, that's 700,000 less than the governor. Stormwater staffing, that's 420,000 less than the governor. Emergency readiness staffing, 420 less than the governor. Enhanced permitting FTEs, 460,000 less than the governor. With solid waste permitting staff, a million less than the governor. Um, line 63 was tied to a fee that was in the governor's budget, and since the this bill does not contain the fee, this does not contain the spending here for above ground storage tanks. And then line 65 is the increase to, of $2 million per year to score grants out of the environmental fund. Currently, there's about $18 million per year that goes out to score grants, and this would bring it up to above 20. And that's ongoing. So the spending from the environmental fund is $33.6 million in the, in the next biennium and 36.2 in the tails. Next page, there's the, a couple other items from the PCA budget from some of the other funds. Uh, maintain current staffing of the remediation fund is about $8 million. Um, a little bit of money out of the state government special revenue fund. Um, the governor had a proposal for some additional spending from contaminated site management for 2.8. And the one of the fee items that actually is in the bill is this bill contains the governor's proposal for the uh, voluntary chloride training program in at PCA, and there is a fee for that, but it's a voluntary um, fee, and this would just spend that amount of that's collected. So the four hundred thousand per year is an estimate based on the amount of fees that are going to be collected on that voluntary program. So on line eighty three, the total increase for the agency is $348.6 million, and most of that is general fund. You'll see that at the line below at 303. And again, a lot of it was mostly due to that one program. Over half of it was due to the, the water infrastructure grants program. The revenue changes dealing with PCA, the uh, on line 87, the air appropriation increase, this is a the PCA is mandated by federal law to raise their air fees by inflation. So this reflects that and the increased spending that goes along with that. And then the only other fee in the bill on, for PCA is the chloride training fee on line 89. The rest of the items here are just transfers in between funds. A lot of this happens because of the operating increase and the line 94 and 95 increases the amount um, that goes from the environmental fund to the remediation fund by $5 million in fiscal year 24 and then $2 million beyond that. And that was in the governor's budget. 
Next, I'll go to the Department of Natural Resources. Um, the general fund changes start on line 113. The operating increase is about $4.5 million less than what the governor was showing. And then on line 114, the, since the Senate does not have additional fees, especially the fishing license increase, it did require some additional general fund money that would go into Fish and the Department or a Division of Fish and Wildlife to help cover their operating increase by not using as much game and fish fund. So the line 114 is basically additional general fund money to the Division of Fish and Wildlife to help cover their operating increase instead of having it all go to the uh, game and fish fund. I'll jump down to line 117 is a transfer of the Upper Sioux Agency State Park, Center File 2250. It was a one-time cost of 5388000 There's language in the bill that allows them to use that money for whatever costs are needed to facilitate that transfer, including land acquisition. We'll jump down to line 121. This was from Senate File 1033. It's additional money for the Red River Mediation Agreement, 36000 per year, but that is only one time. And again, with the DNR, other than the operating increases and one other item, all the general fund new items are one time. Next, a 50-year clean water plan, Senate File 2330, I believe, is $200,000. There's two items from the invasive carp bill, Senate File 2037. Um, some one-time money for the carp removal and surveys, and then 395000 for that, and 325000 for the uh, study. Um, line 125, the, the bill we just heard from Senator Howell the other day extending their AIS grant program, their AIS grant from a few years ago, the bill cancels that and then reappropriates it so it doesn't cost anything. So that's how we're tracking that. I'll jump down to line 129 is the Minnesota Relief Program. Um, it's $8.5 million new money. There's actually $400,000 in the base for that program. So this would be 8.5 new on top of that, a little bit above the governor, um, but it's one-time money. Next, I'll jump down to line 132 was enhancing grasslands and wetlands for carbon capture. The governor had $10 million for this one time, and this uh, bill is at 5.1 million. Next, we have a, a study dealing with the CWD bill that we heard, and it's 1.6 million dollars. And this, when we go through Article One, I'll point out where that that's at the Preon Research Center. Next, I'll jump down to line 138. This deals with uh, additional payments to the. 1854 treaty recipients. Um, this is at three million per year, which is less than what the bill uh, was asking for. But it's three million per year ongoing, and be distributed proportionally to how the existing payments go out. Um, lines 141 until we get to the over to the next page are all part of the governor's get out more, which was some additional one-time money for. Um, a couple of areas. The first was enhancing access to public lands and outdoor facilities. There's 28 million for that. There is a $400,000 carve out for the Silver Bay Trailhead and a $500,000 carve out of that pot for the Redhead Mountain Bike Park. The next pot is sort of the modernizing camping and related infrastructure for 5 million. Uh, modernizing boat access, 35 million, and there's a carve out of that at the Crane Lake Campground of boat access of 1.9, and then 35 million general fund one time for modernizing fish hatcheries and fishing infrastructure, and then the last one is 15 million for uh, restoring streams and water infrastructure. So the total new general fund for the DNR is 234 million. And then 72 million is in the tails, and, and basically all most of that is all due to the operating increase. Next, we'll have the 
changes in natural resources funds. There are a number of items here that the governor's proposal had additional spending, but these were tied to a fee increase for either the boat fees or the park fees. And since this bill does not have those fee increases, it does not have the additional appropriations tied to that. So lines 154 to 157 were all tied to fee increases, so they're not in this bill. But we do are doing the operating increases on line 153. Uh, there's two or three additional ATV projects, the St. Louis County Voyager County Trail for 750000 the Prospe Prospector ATV Trail for 700000 and then Senate File 2170 had 250000 per year. Um, that's one time for the Northwoods Regional ATV Trails. Um, the bill does contain the change in the lottery in lieu account. Um, that we heard earlier is the Senator Hoschild bill that we passed out. That bill was going to spend 100% of the lottery in lieu money. Um, that cost a lot of general fund money on our tails. So this bill is actually at 85%, with 2% of that 85 being for Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails and 1% for underserved um, uh, recreation act recreational activities for underserved. So line 61, 161 and 162 appropriates, gets a start on appropriating some of that money as it goes into the account. Um, more once the account gets established and it's, if it's enacted, that we probably could do more than this out of that account, but I would sort of undercut it at the beginning. So it would be 500,000 for the Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails would be 500,000 the first year and 750 ongoing. And then the new account, outdoor recreational activity or projects for underserved would be 300,000 and 350 ongoing. So the total natural resources fund changes is 14.6, and the governor was like at 34.8, but that was largely tied to um, fee increases. Game and fish fund changes, there's just a few here. The maintain current service levels, you'll see is a 15.9 million. That's less than the governor, mostly because the, the Senate bill didn't have the fees to cover all those um, operating increases. But still $15.9 million from the game and fish fund. Um, there's two new programs that were in the governor's budget, No Child Left Inside, 500,000 per year out of the heritage enhancement account. And there is also money, one-time general fund money for that. And the walk-in access um, program expansion, 400,000 per year, and that is ongoing. Uh, some items that are new on the Senate budgets, the neonicotinoid study, uh, $943,000 out of the heritage enhancement account. And the rough fish report, um, 268,000 out of the Heritage Enhancement Account. And then some additional money out of the Heritage Enhancement Account for shooting sports facility grants. Um, and over the last couple of bienniums, there's been appropriations for this grant program out of the Heritage Enhancement Accounts. They're usually one time, so this continues that 300,000 per year shooting sport facility grants out of the Heritage Enhancement Account. So total spending out of the Game and Fish Fund, which the Heritage Enhancement Account is part of, is $19.5 million um, for the biennium. A couple other changes at the bottom are just tied to the maintaining current service levels, some additional spending out of the RIM account and the Permanent School Fund tied to that. DNR agency total on line 190 is $268. $0.7 million over the base for the biennium for all funds. And of that, $234.2 million is the general fund, and $72 million of the, is in the tails of general fund. The revenue changes tied to the DNR are on lines 193 through 210. You'll see zeros in the areas on lines 194 through 205. And you see on the governor's columns where the governor's fee increases were and, and the money that those fees would have raised. 
the couple items we're carrying here in the Senate bill, the lands bill, that's $572,000. That's in Article 3 of the bill, but we've also passed that separately. This is the second lands bill, and there's, that's just money that goes into the land acquisition account. Um, the swap of money from the non-game wildlife program to the rim happens in the DNR's budget of $150,000. Um, next page, line 211, there is a proposal to deal with military non-resident spouse fishing license. And uh, we've done a little bit extra work on that language to make it apply more broadly to all active service members, including National Guard. And this is an estimate of the lost, there'd be a small amount of lost game and fish revenue for that estimated to be about $67,000 for the biennium. Uh, there's changes in the bill dealing with turtle harvesting and turtle licenses, and there's a little loss of game and fish fund for that, about 5000 per year. There's a one-time transfer of money from the water recreation account. This is tied to boat fees. This will pay the Department of Transportation's costs for dealing with the water safety um, uh, stamp or whatever certification on your driver's license. They needed some one-time money for that. And so that is a one-time transfer of $58,000 from the water rec account to the driver services account at MnDOT. The next line, 215 through 222, are a result of that change in the lottery in lieu going, going up to 85%. There's a loss of general fund revenue of 5.6 in 04 and then ongoing of about $5.9 million. And then that loss of general fund revenue is spread between the heritage enhancement account. So there'll be about $2 million a year new going into the heritage enhancement account. About a million dollars increased money going to the state parks account and metro parks account. A little bit new money for the local trails account. And for the zoos, we'll get about 90000 per year. And then the two new accounts, the Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails account, will get about, since it's starting getting 2% of the whole lottery in lieu, that'll be about 900000 per year once it's up and going. And then the Outdoors for Underserved um, account will be at about 468000 per year ongoing. The... Governor's proposal was tracking some additional um, federal Pittman-Robertson money coming into the Game and Fish Fund based on additional spending happening and, reca and recapturing some uh, additional money that comes from the f federal government that goes into the Game and Fish Fund. And so we're tracking, that's what lines 224 and 227 are. And I don't know if the Senate numbers will be exactly the same as the governor's, but um, we'll have to work with them and, and see how much difference that would be. But there will be additional federal money coming into the Game and Fish Fund um, based on the spending in this bill. Next, we'll go to Met Council uh, Metro Parks. Um, most of the general, the general fund money here is all uh, one time. There's about... $5 million of uh, maintenance increase. The governor had $5 million for the biennium, but ongoing. Then $10 million for modernizing parks and trails. That's $2 million less than the governor. And then mapping infrastructure for climate risk, $2.5 million. And then based on the changes to the lottery in lieu, the, the Metro Parks lottery in lieu um, amount will go up by a million per year. That's on line 248. So the total amount for Met Council Parks will increase by about 19.5 million, and 17.5 of that is general fund, but only the lottery and lieu part of 2 million per year is ongoing. Uh, no change to the Minnesota Conservation Corps. Their appropriation remains at the base level, um, 1.9 million per year for the biennium. Uh, next, we go to uh, Board of Water and Soil Resources, Bowser. 
the first line item is their operating increase. That's the only item, or that's one of the two, only two items in Bowser that is ongoing. That's a ends up being three hundred seventy thousand per year is their operating increase. The rest of this items are all one time, and these were a number of items that were in the governor's bill. Um, soil health practices at twenty six point eight million dollars. That's a little bit less than the governor by four hundred thousand. Um, water storage and treatment, seventeen million. Um, lawns to legumes at two million or four million for the biennium one time. Um, habitat friendly utilities, a million one time. A landscape program, four million one time. The climate uh, grasslands, working lands easements is about six million less than the governor. It's at sixteen million. Um, Peatland for carbon sequestration, 15 million. And then the Senate is not funding the rim easements. Uh, those are about 3.5 per year in the governor's budget, or 7.1 for in the biennium, and this bill does not contain that. The proposal does support, or does fund the tribal liaison FTE at Bowser, and that's ongoing cost. That's on line 286. And then there's some one-time money, additional money for the Minnesota River Basin Board, uh, 50000 per year, but just one time. And that's from Senate File 542. And then there's a 1.25, on the next page, $2.5 million increase to the Natural Resources Block Grant one time. So on line 293 and 293, the total increase for Bowser is 87.184 million, and all that is a general fund increase, and only about one, only a one million dollar increase in the tails, and that's tied to the operating increase and the tribal liaison FTE. Next, we get to the Minnesota Zoo. They have an operating increase of 1.5 million, or three million for the year, and that is ongoing, and then 850 thousand one time for public safety and security systems. So their total increase is $3.85 million and all that is general fund and three million of that is ongoing. Science Museum has an operating increase of uh, $300,000 and that is ongoing. Line 331 is uh, currently the in the base budget there's $100,000 per year that goes to pay back the Metropolitan Landfill Contingency Action Account. I think I got that right. Um, this adds $12 million one time uh, as a payback to that account um, to repay some money that was borrowed, that was transferred out of that account uh, a number of years ago and, and not paid back. So that is it for the change items. So the total new spending in the bill on line 341 is 740 million or 740.25 million and 159.7 million in the tails. Um, the next set lines there, 345 through 348, is just a summary again of the general fund changes. So the general fund changes across the budget areas is 658.2 million. Plus, you count the loss of the general fund revenue due to the lottery and loo change, plus some additional fiscal year 23 spending and cancellations of 210000 And you get to our $670 million fiscal year 24-25 target, as you'll see on line 363. So that is the amount that this bill spends over the base when you count the revenue loss and the new spending. And then in the tails, it is $90 million. Again, that accounts for new spending and general fund loss. The last page of the spreadsheet just kind of summarizes the different fee changes again that are throughout the spreadsheet that we already went through in the different agencies. So that is it for the spreadsheet. I do have an, <coughs> another version of the spreadsheet that I will post or make available. It's about 26 pages long that goes through each division of each agency and shows all the, um, all the riders and all the appropriations. 
and I can make that available also. Um, but this spreadsheet here just showed the change items, but I'd be happy to, I'll post this, the other longer spreadsheet on the Senate Council website, but if anyone else wants it, I can make a copy of it and make it available also. Thank you, Mr. Mueller, and also Mr. Sandy and my staff uh, for putting so many hours, you know, long hour. Uh, make, it, make it right, make it fit uh, the front end and the tail end of our budget. Any questions from members before we go to Article 1? Mr. Stanley. Oh, I got it. You got it? Okay, yeah. Mr. Mueller. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll go through Article 1 since it's tied to all the appropriations in the spreadsheet. I won't repeat everything that I just did on the spreadsheet. I'll just point out some things in Article 1 where there's some language that are that's either different or maybe new in the governor's bill. And after I'm done with Article 1, Mr. Stanley will cover Article 2, some of the policy sections. So I'll be, I'll be jumping over all the the language that is always part of the governor's base budget. And so it's not language that's new um, to this budget bill. Um, so the whole page one and two is all part of the base budget. Uh, number, also page three is pretty much base budget. On page four, starting on line 4.13, is the governor's, um, had $500,000 to facilitate greenhouse gas um, modeling one time. Um, the governor also, on line 4.8 is the governor's, um, the water infrastructure grant program at $87.2 million. Um, or for each year the biennium and that amount is one time. There is on line 429 some money for um, cumulative impacts. And this is the governor's amount that was in the governor's bill. Um, so it's about $915,000 from the environmental fund. Some of that is ongoing. Um, line 5.1 is the governor's language for the PFAS blueprint. On line 5.11 is the language dealing with uh, fish kills in Senate file 50. Uh, 66, and there's some language later on in the bill for that. Uh, line 5.19 deals with the firefighter turnout gear report. And then line 5.26 are the protocols for microplastics report, 500,000 for that. And then line 6.5 is the appropriation for dealing with the, the new PFAS um, language that is in Article 2. We'll jump next to page seven. Um, these are mostly riders that are tied to items in the governor's bill, um, dealing with air for air monitoring. On line 7.1 is for air monitoring equipment. Uh, 7.6 for air emission reduction grants. Um, 7.14 is for air compliance equipment. And 7.17, this is the appropriation that had money going to uh, research for the difficult to manage pollutants and grants. And of this amount, 2.1 is for research and 16.7 is for grants. And then 900,000 on line 7.2 would be to NRRI to do some of that same research. Next, I'll jump to page 10, is the, there's a lang language in the bill, a governor's proposal for $2 million per year for technical assistance to tribal governments. Um, that was from the governor's bill. That's one time. Um, next, I'll jump to page 12. Um, it's 25 million one time for grants to support uh, water treatment systems and water issues dealing with PFAS. 25 million one time from the general fund that was in the governor's budget. That language is on 12.23. On 13.29 is the additional amount added to the score grants. That the, so the amount on 13.29 
is a $2 million per year addition. Next, I'll go to, there's on line 15.7 is 190,000 per year for Green Step Cities. That was in the governor's budget. A solar, a study to stud, uh, recycling solar energy equipment, uh, 420,000. That's on line 15.1. That was in the governor's budget. 15.16 um, is 650 from the per year from the environmental fund for the Minnesota Green Court. And then PFAS reduction grants on line 15.19, um, $4.2 million. And this is, these are one time, our PFAS reduction grants. There's also a waste prevention and reduction grant program that was in the governor's budget on line 15.3. That's $13.9 million each year of the biennium, and that's one time. And then there's also on line 16.15, 150,000. The second starts in the second year, but then is ongoing, and that's from the environmental fund. There's some language in Article Two that deals with lead and cadmium in consumer products, a, pro, a prohibition of that, and that was in the governor's bill. Next, I'll jump to. Line 17 is the language that transfers $12 million on 17.32, on one time from the general fund to the Metropolit Metropolitan Landfill Contingency Action Trust account. That's how it goes. Um, on page 19 is line 19.23 is the appropriation for the transfer of the Upper Sioux Agency State Park. Um, $5.4 million, and that appropriation is available till June 30th, 2027 to facilitate the transfer of the land. Um, one million on line 19.3 is one million in fiscal year 23 for the drill core library, and that's in fiscal year 23. Next we have, uh, I'll jump to page 22 is a governor's item for increased capacity on line 22.25, increased capacity for broadband, and that's one-time money. Uh, dealing with when they get requests to have broadband cross public land and water. The next one I'll go to is top of page 23 is the $200,000 for the 50-year clean water plan. Page 24, line 3, is the neonicotinoid study language. And then the lines 2411 through 2422 are the two appropriations dealing with the um, invasive carp. Line 24.23 is from the Heritage Enhancement Account, and that's for the rough fish report. Then line 25.32 is the cancellation and the reappropriation of that AIS grant from Senator Howell's bill. Next, I'll jump to line, page 28, line 4. This is the additional 8.5 million per year for the relief program. And it's 8.9 per year because there was 400,000 in the base. And then the governor on line 28.17 had 1.5 million per year in the biennium for um, collecting seeds um, for forest, for reforestation on, in state lands. And that's 1.3 million for the biennium. Next, I'll jump to page 30, line 21. These are the new appropriations that come from the new ac accounts from the lottery and lieu change. Um, 500 the first year and 750 ongoing for parks outside the seven county metro area based on recommendations from the Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails Commission. And then line 30.32 is the amount that would be coming for uh, the new account that funds projects for activities that connect diverse and underserved Minnesotans through expanding cultural and environmental experiences. 
on line 31.7 through 3129 are the additional amounts from the ATV fund that I covered on the spreadsheet. Um, I'll point out on line 33.16 is the money for no child left behind. And it's 500 per year out of the general fund and 500 per year out of the heritage enhancement account. Line 33.29 is the appropriation of $1.6 million that goes to the chronic, the chronic weight for chronic wasting disease contingency plans that goes to the Center for Infectious Disease and Research. Next, I'll jump to page 36, line 31. This is from Senate File 2797. This directs the that within the additional appropriations in the bill to the enforcement division, they shall um, hire and recruit at least 2.5 FTEs to engage and outreach members of the Southeast Asian communities. Um, next, I will... Under operation support, the governor had some money for some information technology on line 37.7, and then reappropriated the legal cost money that was canceled that is being canceled and reappropriated seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of that, and then the money for the additional treaty tribes payments under 38 on line 38.18 three million per year. The get out more one-time pots of money start on line 38.22. Again, it's 118 million total, and it's divided 28 million for the um, public lands and recreation facilities. And again, there's a $400,000 carve out for um, Silver Bay Trail Trailhead, and 500 for the city of Chis Chisholm for development of the Redhead Mountain Bike Park. There's $5 million for modernizing camping, $35 million for modernizing boat access, and there's a carve-out of $1.9 million for the Crane Lake Voyagers National Park Visitor Center and Campground and boat access, $35 million for modernizing fish hatcheries, and $15 million for restoring streams. And then lastly for DNR is the $58,000 on line 3.21 transfer for the to pay for the boat safety certification. Under Bowser, I'll jump ahead. A lot of the new language starts on line 41 for some of the new programs at Bowser. There's also language in Article 2 that is tied to some of these appropriations. Uh, Lawns de Legumes is on line 41.3. That's one time. But Habitat Friendly Utilities is on line 42.4. Um, Habitat Enhancement landscape, that's two million per year. There's language in the bill for that. Uh, Thirteen point four million each year. The biennium starts uh, is on line forty two point one five for soil health activities. There's eight million per year for conservation easements, um, and seven point five million on forty three point one eight are for other conservation easements dealing with carbon sequestration. 8.5 or for water quality on line 43.21 water quality projects and then the increase of the block grants is on 43.3 next I'll jump to the Met Council on page 45 is some of the one-time money on line 45.21 that they have for dealing with um, tools for mapping climate risk and then $10 million to modernize the regional parks and trails one-time money. Then the last item is the on page 46 are the appropriations for the zoo and the language on the one-time money for the zoo is on line 46.18 and that is it for the appropriation language. I'll turn it over to Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, members, good afternoon. Um, Article 2 begins on page 46, and the first 10 sections all deal with uh, Senator Morrison, Senate File 1526, the Chronic Wasting Disease Farm Survey Day Bill. There's been some changes since this committee saw that bill, and I'll just briefly mention a few of those. 
On page 48, line 19, there used to be a $500 fee for transferring a whitetail deer registration, but that fee has been removed. On lines 49.30 to 49.32, the language in the bill that you initially saw made a herd owner liable for damages resulting from the sale or unlawful disposal of CWD infected cervidae. The Judiciary Committee added language here, the language you see on these lines that provides that this liability exists only where the person knew or reasonably should have known that the deer were infected. Lines 50.19 through 50.22 um, deal with cervidae semen. Um, this is new language authorizing the importation of cervidae semen from a herd certified as low risk under a federal CWD voluntary herd certification program that's operated by USDA. Lines 50.23 through, sorry, um, 50.28, this is new language authorizing the interstate transfer of cervidae between certified zoos. There's also language here that authorizes a certified zoo to import an orphaned cervid on a case-by-case -case basis when approved by the DNR. On lines 51.1 through 51.5, there's new language authorizing the DNR to contract with the Board of Animal Health to administer some or all of the agency's duties with respect to farmed uh, white-tailed deer that takes place once the transfer of that authority occurs, and we'll talk about that in a later section. And then the final change for these first 10 sections that I'll mention is on lines 51.21 through 51.22. Uh, this language, when it was heard in this committee, required starting uh, on a date in 2023, annual testing of all deer using an RT quick, sorry, all farmed deer, white-tailed deer. Um, annual testing using an RT quick test. Uh, this language has been changed to make it so that that requirement does not apply until the USDA has approved the use of that test for that purpose. The next section, and I'm on page 52 here, the next section is section 11. This is from the governor's bill. bill and it repeals a requirement to file a uh, permit application in quadruplicate. Sections 12 through 17 are from Senator Morrison's voter safety bill, Senate file 553, requiring that most people born after June 30th, 1987 have a watercraft operator's permit in order to operate a motorboat and imposing related requirements on motorboat rental businesses. Sections 18 and 19 are from Senator Swadzenski, Senate File 193, authorizing the DNR to issue a resident angling uh, license to spouses of members of the armed forces. There was a change here in response to some comments that Senator Lang made when this bill was heard in this committee. Section 19 is new, and this was to address the issue where it wasn't clear whether or not the existing language or the new language adequately covered spouses of National Guard uh, personnel, and so Section 19 has been added to address that concern. Sections 20 through 24 are from Senator Herr, Senate File 612, modifying turtle regulation. These sections eliminate turtle sellers' licenses and require a person to have a recreational turtle license to take or possess turtles. There is one change that I'll draw your attention to on page 57, line 27. The fee for a recreational turtle license uh, in current law is $25, and this line reduces that cost to $5. <clears throat> if, if I may add that uh, that $5 reduction was proposed by Senator Wiesenberg. <laughs> And now I'm on page 60, Mr. Chair. This begins 15 sections, sections 25 through 40 that are from the governor's bill. These are from the Bowser policy bill that we heard a few weeks ago, requiring Bowser to work with stakeholders on various issues, reconceptualizing various Bowser programs, and establishing several habitat-friendly programs that you heard Mr. Mueller talk about a minute ago. On page 70, sections 41 and 42 are from Senator McEwen, and Senate File 68, requiring development of a fish kill response protocol. 
Sections 43 through 45 are also from a Senator McEwen bill, Senate file 2245, adding definitions of microplastics and related terms to the Pollution Control Agency statutes. Section 46 is from the governor's bill, uh, putting in statute the chloride reduction training functions that they are already performing. Also added on page 77, line two, the, was a, uh, they're currently charging a fee for this, and this language put in place that current fee amount as the cap on that fee. The bottom of page 77 is section 47, that's a governor's bill section modernizing the paint stewardship statute. That'll take you all the way to page 85. Sections 48 through 52 are also from the governor's bill. Modifying the capital assistance program statutes by expanding the types of projects that can be funded and increasing the maximum grant awards under the program. On page 90, sections 53 and 54 are also from the governor's bill, adding waste reduction and reuse to the types of projects that can be funded with competitive recycling and composting grants. At the top of page 91 are there is the first of two sections, sections 55 and 56, from Senator Champion's Senate File 466, requiring cumulative impacts analyses to be undertaken for certain, uh, by certain PCA permit applicants. This language also has changed since it was uh, heard in this committee. These sections used to apply to the whole state, but now they apply only to the seven county metro area and Indian country, which is a term that's defined in federal statute. They also used to apply to any permit issued by the PCA under Chapter 115 and 116. That language has been changed so that they now only apply to air permits, certain solid waste facility permits, and hazardous waste facility permits. Section 57 is from Senator Morrison, Senate File 834. This is the main new section dealing with the regulation of products containing PFAS. On page 102 is section 58. This is another section from Senate file 553, facilitating inclusion of watercraft operators permit information on driver's licenses. Section 59 is from Senator Hosschild's Senate file 356. This is the section that makes the lottery and loot changes that Mr. Mueller was talking about. And if you'll look on line 104.29, you will see the increase from 72.43% in the current statute to 82% under the bill. And right after that, you'll see the additional 2 and 1% pots that Mr. Mueller described. On page 106, section 60, this is from the governor's bill, prohibiting the importation, manufacture, sale, or distribution of products containing cadmium or lead in amounts that exceed certain thresholds. Sections 61 through 63 are also from Senate File 834, prohibiting the use of Class B firefighting foam that contains PFAS, with certain exceptions. Section 64 is Senator Morrison's Senate File 2330, requiring development of a scope of work for a plan to protect clean water in Minnesota for the next 50 years. Section 65 is a governor's bill section requiring a report on options for development of a solar module and installation component recycling program. The top of page 112 is section 66. This is from Senate file 68 as well, requiring various agencies to recommend statutory changes to the legislature to prevent fish kills in the driftless area. Section 67 is another Senate file 834 section providing a temporary exemption to the ban on Class B firefighting foam containing PFAS for terminals and oil refineries. Section 68 is another section from the Farm Survey Day Bill, Senate File 1526. This is the section that actually transfers farm whitetail deer oversight to the DNR effective on January 1st of 2025. Section 69 is from Senator Herr, Senate File 612, prohibiting the transfer or renewal of a turtle seller's license. Section 70 is Senator Kunish's Senate File 2250. This is the language that requires the DNR to convey to the Upper Sioux community the state-owned property within the boundaries of Upper Sioux Agency State Park. 
Section 71 is new language. It's been, it's not new, it's revised language from uh, Senator Seberger, Senate File 2047, dealing with White Bear Lake. This requires DNR to convene stakeholders to develop options for inserting communities in the White Bear Lake area have safe drinking water. Section 72 is a reviser instruction that's part of Senate File 1526. And the last section, Mr. Chair, is a repealer that contains repealers related to the changes made in the governor's bill, the boating safety bill, the farm survey day bill, and the turtle licensure bill. And that is all that is in Article 2. Article 3, Mr. Chair, is just Senator Hostile's 2023 lands bill that you all passed out of here a while ago and sent to finance. Okay, members. Um, all the uh, provision in the omnibus bill are bills that we are heard in this committee. Um, I try to, we try to, or I try to be as inclusive as possible. Um, there may be some bill that's left out, uh, but there, perhaps there may be other venue, other vehicle that the bill can go into. Don't forget that we still have legacy, and also there's the option of L L LCCMR too to get those to get the funding. Uh, and I will support any bill that we heard and is left out of this bill, or I'm open for amendment um, coming this Thursday. And just want to ask a favor beforehand that as long as it doesn't change our budget or take our budget off track, then that will be a possible amendment that we may adapt into this omnibus bill. So um, any question members to the bill and um, Mr. Stanley and Mr. Miller can uh, go into detail, detail and answer. Okay, looks like we like the bill, right? <laughs> you know, um, I'm trying to like I'm trying to be inclusive as possible and trying to make this bill a good Senate stand. Um, my personal view, I wish that it could be a little bit more progressive, but uh, um, want to get this bill passed with the language that passed. Oh, Senator Hoffman. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I, I can't remember the Senate file number. I was um, sorry. I, I, it, it, it's interesting. I, I was outside. I, I stuck my head in here and I was outside. And I, there was like ten people. Then it was another ten people, and it was like. But um, remember the water project um, bill that we. Um, that we looked at that you and I were pretty impressed, the one in where they had that uh, pump, the Jasinski's bill, that the 335. I didn't see it highlighted in here. Did, did you, did, I thought, um, tell me, what are your thoughts on that? Sure, um, I'm thinking about maybe they can look at the LCC on possibility, or you know, maybe I can review it again. We, there's lots of bill that we go through and uh, um, you know, just, we have to keep the budget balance. No, 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 so, I get that. Yeah, but but I'll, I'll work with you. Um, yeah, I was just con I was just wondering because it was you and I were both blown away at yes. it. Here was this yes. pump filter system, and it was clearing out the water crystal mm -hmm. clear, and it was like really an efficient mm -hmm. use. I was like, ha, huh. you know, it, one of those. It's kind of like when you get Peter Peter Sorensen who comes in here to talk. He finally has the you know. 20 years later, the fix on, on stopping the carp that, you know, we've been part of for 10 years yeah. coming up here. So uh, just was a question uh, more so than anything else. I understand, wow, you got a lot of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, amazing, and I uh, appreciate being part of that discussion. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. And, yep. Yep. and like I said, I just want to read right. We can talk offline on that, um, that provision that you okay. talk about. Sure. Thank you. So any... Any other question? We have 30 minutes left, but I can certainly adjourn with all agreement from members. And um, hold on just a second. Let me get a little advice from council. So it helped me make my decision. So thank you. We have good attendance today. Just missed a few. And so this 
Uh, thank you for listening, and we'll look forward to Thursday um, for more input and amendments as well. Uh, the, whether we take it or not, it has to uh, be consensus of the majority of this committee. So thank you all for your time. And so I'll adjourn this uh, committee on environment, uh, climate, and legacy.